Wow. Well, it's been busy for me lately, as you guys may have known. But not to fear, because I'm going to be doing some video game videos again. Yay. Um, this is going to be a triple feature, so it might even be an hour-long video of me rambling on about these games. But it's been a long time, so who the hell cares? Um, I was at the fair the other day, um, and then, look at this. Went to a concert a couple weeks ago. Went to see Squeeze at the Showbox. So fucking fantastic. I don't know how those guys do it um, at in their 60s. How they can manage to sing as good as they did back when they were 20. But they can. So, And again, thank you Grand Theft Auto Vice City. Because if it weren't for that game, I never would have discovered this fucking awesome band. Um, I went to PAX. Um, it was horrible, I think. Um, maybe I'll talk about that stuff while I'm going through these games, but I, I do want to tell you guys what I think about these games. These are obscure games. Like, this first one, I don't even think an American game reviewer has even looked at. So, um, but we're going to start off with this game. This is Tanigawa Koji no Shogi Shinan 3. Oh, I thought you spoke Japanese. Okay, well then I'll translate it. It's Koji Tanigawa's Shogi Learning, or Shogi Lessons, or Shogi Teaching. Three, yes, there were other games. I think the first one was literally an MSX exclusive. The second game was released for the Famicom. There were actually three of them. Yeah, one for the Famicom, and then two different games for the disc system. Although, I played them all, and they all appear to be exactly the same, so I don't know what the differences are. And uh, then there's this one. Which was a Famicom ex exclusive. So let's. Um, this one only cost me six bucks. Complete everything comes with it. Six bucks. Although it's a shogi game. So what shogi? Well, let's find out. We're gonna take a look here. Um, first, let's uh, start the game up. Yeah, I got that nice little piano music. And I'm just going to let this title screen sit for a minute. I just want to see, I want you guys to see the demo because it's so freaking fascinating. It's even better than the Superman 64 demo. Yep, it just resets. No credits, scrolls, or anything. In fact, this game is made by an unknown developer. Yes, I know Pony Canyon's name is on the title screen. They were just the publisher. That's some people don't really know, though, is that. Most of these games are just published by a company. The publisher didn't actually make the games. Alright, so let's play. Although, I do have to give it credit. That is a really good digitized image for 1989. The Famicom had already been out for six years since it was out in 1983. So anyways, this is like an exhibition game. This is where you face Koji Tanigawa. Then they have what's called Tasami Shogi, Slot Shogi, and I think this is like a record viewer or like you can watch the games. Tanigawa played with some other guy. I think their name was like Nakagawa or something. Let's just do an exhibition game. Um, so Shogi is basically, and yeah, it's got two player capability. And listen to this. Oh, I didn't know Koji Tanigawa was a freaking chipmunk. That drum kind of sounds like Konami. Reminds me of their games. So Shogi is basically Japanese chess. There's really not much to say about it besides, um, I learned a few things watching a video on YouTube where, uh, so basically, like, when you get your piece in, like, these last three squares where, like, the opponent's pieces start, that's when you get promoted. Um, so, um, and here's the other thing, too. For example, these are like these are these pieces in the front are the equivalent to pawns, and uh, when you get them to the promotion spaces, they don't go to like you don't like change it to a queen or a rook or whatever. It becomes its own unique piece, and this guy's gonna kick my ass. And you know what the sad thing about it is? This is on the easiest level, so you first like to bring up the options. So here you got the music, and you can actually switch music, which you think would be a good thing. But the only problem is, I'll let, I'll let them all play for a bit, but uh, the other two songs are extremely repetitive. 
mean, just listen to this one. I mean, it's a good song. It's just... I mean, Shogi games take quite a while to complete, so... But I can't take his freaking piece, right? Oh, wait, I did. Wow. And I'm not gonna play till the show game's finished, or I'm gonna be here all day. But he's thinking. And that's one problem with this game is that, uh. Um. Sometimes the computer takes a while to think. Now, this game technically did have sequels on the Game Boy and Game Boy Color. There was Shogi, simply just Shogi, which is basically a port of this game. Even a lot of the music is reused. And then there's Shogi 2 and 3 for the Game Boy Color, and uh, I think those games uh, are pretty much exactly the same. I think maybe some sound differences, and that's about it. Maybe some graphical differences. I didn't really plan that much, but from what I saw, they were the same exact game, so I don't know why they would release three different games. Same with this. Um, of course, the only difference is they don't have Tanigawa's endorsement. So, with that said, let's go to another game. I'm going to try um, the next game, and this is called Jango. And ignore that message on the bottom left, there's actually no cheats activated at all. Look at this animation, though. Ah, oh, yes. The generic Asian music. So, this game is believed to be developed by Crosstalk because they're the same guys who made Hillspar, and thank you so much GDRI for telling me that. That's something I've been wondering since my childhood. And for those of you who don't know, Hillspar is the bane of my dad's existence. He thinks it is the worst game ever made. I don't agree with that personally, but hey, different strokes, different folks. These are really cool um, title graphics, but something I, you guys may not know is um, there's a game designer who's pretty well known named uh, George Kamitani. He actually worked on the graphics, and I think he did some programming for Hillsfar. Very interesting. So let's play this. And it even has the same thing as Hillsfar on the title screen where you press start, and it doesn't start right away. The music has to fade out first. Um, now, looking at the instruction manual, I found out, because I, I thought this was asking for my birthday, but um, it's actually asking for the date. Today's date. And yeah, you can't even change, you can only change this one digit, which is stupid. They, like, did they even think, like, well, what if someone plays this in, like, 2019 or something? Um, let's, okay. I really don't know why you have to enter this. I don't even think the instruction manual says, but, uh, let's see, it's the 21st, so, okay. So here, you can uh, register your name. Now this thing, this is unique because, uh, I'm just going to use my real name here. Uh, this one I'm definitely not going to be playing along because I have no idea how to play it. But again, it was a good deal, so I couldn't pass up on it. Mm, where is Ra? There we go. Where's C? It's right there. Okay. Here, you have to set a PIN number. Yes. This is probably like the only NES game that has like a password. And I don't mean like a password to continue where you left off. I mean a password where like, like to protect your profile or whatever. We'll just do one, 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 one. So, um, uh, I'll play as me. And it's going to ask for your PIN number. I think it's saying pick a few other players. I think it's saying there, please wait. This is pretty much like a Mahjong variant. And it seems to be its own original game because I can't find a lot about it besides the fact that there were other Jango video games made. And just like Hillsfar, barely any music in the game. Now, I don't know if that's because, like, they didn't really have, a comp like, a proper composer. Maybe, like, a programmer did a few tunes or something, but, man. Just, this is a game from 1990. There should be music. But, alas, there is not. Anyways. 
There's not much to say about this. It's just a Mahjong variant. There's literally like nothing else to say. So I'm going to go to the next game because this is one that I might actually be able to play. Um, oh, and I didn't show you guys the box art. But oh, here it is. Um, not not bad. Just your generic box art. Looks pretty good. Um, now the next game we're going to be playing is Magical Taruto Kun 2 Maho Dai. Bulkin. That's it. So, Magical Tarutokun 2, um, Magical Adventure. So, let's see if that's really true. I read up on Wikipedia about the anime, and we all know how accurate Wikipedia is, so... Alright. Ooh. That music's kind of... And it does end, so I'm gonna let it play out. Alright, let's try this out, see how good it is. Uh, well, I know Hajime Kara is, um, like a beginning or whatever. Oh, okay, that's, it's, I forgot, this game does save your progress, okay. Um, I'm just gonna name myself, ah, just like it, ABGN did in the winter games, except I'm doing it with six characters, bitch. Oh yeah, we're going extreme. Alright, these are nice little cutscene graphics. Um, so this game was developed by Tosei, same guys who are known, well, if you watch ABGN, you'll know them for making Toxic Crusaders, um, Frankenstein's or not Frankenstein's monster, Frankenstein the Monster Returns. Yeah, so they may not have the best repertoire, but I've heard this game is pretty good. They also did the first um, game in the series on the NES. Okay. Oh, am I playing as freaking Goku or something? Like, he's got the same colored shirt and hair. So from what I can gather, though, this is what the most likely inaccurate Wikipedia article says. Basically, you're playing as a... Uh, it's about this this kid who uh, is having problems at school, and this wizard kid named Taru Tokun, um, like, helps him out somehow. Oh, wow, one-hit deaths. I don't like that. You know what? You know what's a huge pet peeve of mine in games? You know, some might say, like, no continues or, you know, difficulty too hard or something. My problem? Dying in one hit when the enemies take more than one hit. Or even the bosses. Because isn't that, you know, like ABGN said about Lesser the Unlikely, you know, it's like, isn't it the point to feel like somebody you're not or something? You know, feel like somebody's strong? Yeah, well, I don't really feel strong when I die in one freaking hit. So... Okay, I'm gonna be really careful this time. Gotta yeah, move slow. Are those turkeys without like feathers or something? Okay, I'm gonna. Okay. Okay. Alright. Okay, yeah, I don't know when he's gonna turn around, so I gotta be careful. Okay. Armadillos and naked turkeys. Very good game design right here. I don't know if this game has the zero lives rule, but if it does, I'm not really in trouble. I was gonna say, don't tell me you can get on that one platform. Oh, jeez. Okay, yep. Oh, crap, you can keep going. You can keep going. Oh my god. This is tough. Like, I don't. You could probably jump on the enemies, but I might be on my last life, which means I don't wanna take a chance. Oh well. You can't even jump on an enemy, so you're. So besides that one punch, you're basically defenseless. <sighs> oh, I have to put in my name again? Oh. Ah. That's just my reaction to what I just typed in for my name. It makes me want to go. <sighs> in fact. I'm 
pretty sure that last option it was asking me is how fast I want the messages to go. And... What? You have to freaking watch this cutscene. You can't skip it. There's nothing to do here. Why can't I skip it? I mean, at least the game controls well. Okay, this time I'm gonna make more of an effort to... the naked turkeys. Okay, can I? I was gonna try punching him, but maybe I was just wasn't close enough. Alright, try this again. Oh gee! I pressed the wrong button. That was my fault. I don't know. I don't know about this game, guys. What do you think? What, what did Dennis Hopper say in, uh, Waterworld? It does look like shit. But it is nowhere near the worst action game I have ever played. Not even close. But like I said, it controls well. It controls really good, in fact. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, I think this game is programmed by the same guy who did Toxic Crusaders. So, that game, I think, had good controls for the most part. Although, like, you had to use the select button for one of the weapons and that. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Oh! Yes. And you can't even... Like, seriously, I want to... Oh, and that's a character select, too, so I'm a freaking idiot for that. Okay, this is my last try. If I die, I do have a little bit of a bonus feature for you guys, but that's as far as I'm going. Okay, I gotta be really careful. Really careful. Okay. But you die in one hit, and that's a problem. That's a real problem. Takoyaki. That's what those balls are called. I think I, I watched some guys review that, that they're supposed to be like octopus, like fried octopus balls. Speaking of which, that's what this game sucks. Not a bad game, but it's just hard. And maybe, maybe it's a good game, and I just suck at it. And that could be very well the case. I don't know. Should I give it one last try? One more, because I really don't want to have to. Oh yeah, yeah, let's continue from the last level or whatever. What the fuck is this? No idea what I'm doing. The game froze, by the way. I'm pressing every button on the controller. Nothing. The game froze. Uh, oh, you have to press up. I can't really complain. I'm sure the manual explains this. I just have no idea. Well, I'm pressing every button on the controller. When, they're, when that little cutscene's playing out, and it's not. I think this is like tic tac toe. Or not, not tic tac toe, rock, paper, scissors. I think that's what it is. I think that's what John Ken is, and. Okay, I'm done. I can't play this. I have no idea what the hell I'm doing. So let's. Let's load up something else. How about, uh... Well, hang on. I'm gonna pause that. Let's see, can I find the box for this one? Let's make this a little bonus feature. If I can find the freaking box for it. Otherwise, I'll just have to do it in another video. I can't find the freaking box. It should be in here somewhere. Should be in here somewhere. I don't know, I can't find it. Now hang on, give me a couple minutes. Which I think it is in here. I just have to find it. I could have swore this is where I put it. Oh my gosh. It 
ain't in here. Are you cereal? <sighs> Is it in here or something? Like, geez, like. Hang on, guys. I want to add one more, one more thing to this thing before I call it off. Who's messaging me at this time of day? Despite the fact that it's. Oh, I don't even know who the fuck that guy is. Okay. Got some strangers messaging me, guys. Stranger danger, stranger danger. Where is the freaking box? I don't know. I'll check here, and this is like where I call it quits. I don't know. I can't find it. I'm sorry. I guess I'm not going to be showing you guys that video. But that's okay, because I'm getting more games, like I said, I'm getting more games in the mail, and I will show you guys those when I get them, because I haven't done videos for a while, and I want to get back to doing them. Um, if I had internet, like, on my computer, I would stream, but the only way I can access the internet is through my phone, and the only way I can upload a video to YouTube is to do it through my hotspot, so I'm kind of screwed here. But yeah, I can't find the freaking game. It's not in here. It's not in there. Um, oh yeah, that's another thing I want to show you guys. So, I just bought the CD, this Chicago uh, 50th Anniversary Remix, because it's one of my favorite albums of all freaking time. And apparently, I, what I heard is they're actually going to be um, recalling those CDs, because everyone's complaining about how it sounded. So, I guess they're going to re-release it. And they said you can trade your copy in for, uh, for the re-release when it gets released. But no, I'm going to keep that, because that just means it's going to be worth something, you know. Like, I can see in the future. Yeah, there was an extremely rare, like, few copies were made of this version of the CD. Yeah, I'm keeping it. But anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Um, sorry I couldn't find the freaking game. I don't know. I don't know. I, I always think that I have it. I'll check one last freaking time. Yeah, I haven't got to use this... Super fam Super Famicom. What the fuck am I talking about? Yeah, Super Famicom. But I haven't been playing it a lot lately. And like I said, it's because I've been out most of the time on my weekends and then I'm busy during the week because I'm you know at work, I have a job. Here's the game. Here's the game. This is Niji no Silk Road, Zigu Zagu. Daiboken, or Bokenki, that's it. So, um, Rainbow Silk Road, or Silk Road of the Rainbow um, Zigzag Adventure, I think is what it translates to. Uh, this is an RPG. I'm not playing this long because I have no idea how to play it, but it's got a great soundtrack. Let's check it out. Um, so let's go back to uh, normal size. Well, we'll wait. Yeah, that sucks. There's a little sound glitch that kind of ruins it there. The music in this game was actually written by Ase Kobayashi. Um, I think he also worked on some of the Super Robot Tyson games as well. And uh, this game, um, there was actually an official soundtrack released for this, like with like actual performances of, this, of some of the songs. But of course, the album's so freaking rare to find. I wouldn't mind even a digital download, but I can't even find that anywhere. Which really sucks. So anyways, this game was developed by Advanced Communication Company. And you know what they were all known for, don't you? Yeah, you do. You watch ABPN, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Anyways, um, here's a name entry here. And yeah. So Advanced Communication made this game, which might be a bad sign, but in Japan they actually developed some pretty decent, um, some pretty decent RPGs. Like they did the whole East trilogy, um, although I personally don't like those games. I think they're horrid piles of crap. Yeah, I said that. And uh, release the one on Super Nintendo. I need I need to give the others a chance. So I'll, I'll kind of res I'll half resend my comment and half not. So I'll just. Let's see. Now this is the message speed. Um, can't remember which one's the fastest though. I'm gonna say three. Here's a little cutscene. 
really nice. Silk Road no Katasumi ni Little Land Oyu. I can't, I can't read it that fast. I could read the text, I just can't read it at that fast. I have to like sit there for a second and go, okay, that's the character. Okay, that's what it's saying right now. I can't even translate it unless it's in the katakana. But basically, the plot of this is this guy named Zru or Zrural or whatever. Because um, there isn't, I forgot to mention, there is an English translation of this game. But I, I gotta play it legit like this. Um, but anyways... He usurps the throne, and the prince, um, he kills the king and queen, but the prince is, like, uh, smuggled out by one of the guards, and, uh, he, uh, anyways, this, so this game takes place several years later when the prince is growing up, and he has to find, I think, seven shards to the, to this rainbow mirror, so, and that's the plot of the game original and it does take place in like the Middle East which is kind of unique. Unfortunately there's no credits to uh, tell you who worked on the programming and graphics at ACC. I guess they weren't too proud of this one. Um, there is a, I mean, there because they're not in the game, but there actually is a credit screen in the instruction booklet. Um, the music was actually arranged by a uh, um, Ryoko Kihara, who is, uh, she runs a business I found out called Little Land. Her and Shigeru Kihara, who is credited in this game as a music director from Astro Music, they're actually both credited in the first Momotaru Densetsu game for the Famicom under the special thanks section, so I don't know exactly what they did. I'm gonna get in a few fights here. You do have the option to run, though, which is nice. Nice little overworld. I wonder if this uses the same engine as uh, Sansara Naga, because that was done around the same time. And Victor Entertainment also published that one. I did find a, just like one or two recordings from the CD where there's like Japanese lyrics to the song. And that was pretty cool to hear. I should be running into something. Let's go into the sand here. That's where you find all the animals. Do I have some kind of cheat set up? Oh, who's this guy? Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, see that blue bar on the top left? That's your water meter, so you have to go to wells around the the under, or the or overworld and, and grab some. Okay, there's a cheat activated for gold, but who cares, I'm not going to play it much. Hang on a minute, let me see something. Oh, I need to turn off all these cheats, that's the problem. Sorry, I didn't. I honestly didn't know they were naval, but I gotta play it legit. And if I don't, I might as well quit. I like my rhyming. I should be a rapper, but okay. I'm gonna talk to this guy. Oh man, he wants to kill me. This is pretty catchy. Can you believe the composer Ase Kobayashi is 87 years old? He's the same age as a. Uh, John Williams. It's hard to believe. Hey, but I got him. I don't know what that was. Ooh. Oh, that didn't take long. Ooh, two thieves. I'm probably gonna die, by the way. Oh, I ran away. Oh, it's... Well, I don't know, it looks like one of those Mexican skulls from, like, Coco or whatever. I'm probably gonna die, by the way. Okay, maybe not. Maybe I'll do really good. So anyways, these are the three games. I want to get to that. I have a feeling these things can poison me or something. Oh, you have to... Oh, that's weird. You have to click on it. What? It's not the one I wanted to attack? Well, I'm glad. Well, then what was the point of having me click on him? Oh, again, same same development team as Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, but 
To be fair, I can't really complain because I do say that's a good game. And I said that in front of the angry video game nerd, in front of all his fans, on camera. I'm surprised he didn't include that in his video. I don't know what the... Come on, just die, man. Just die. I'm probably gonna die. Ooh. I don't know who these Yushi 1, Yushi 2, and Yushi 3 people are. They must be like additional party members or something. Oh, this time I didn't click on the first one. Alright, I have a chance. Oh, I definitely have a chance here. Come on, I can do it. I can do it. Come on, kill. Yes! I could run away, but come on. Look, I'm almost there. So I think that that meter on the top right the, with the H on it, I think that's your total health. There we go. What's in the box? 100 gold pieces. Oh yeah. Alright, well that's the game. Not much to say. Um, I don't know if you could save here or if you ever go to a town to do that or what. But I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys real soon with more Famicom games, I promise. I've just been really busy. I do want to do a couple videos about packs and, you know, or a video talking about, like, packs and the pro Jared situation and all that stuff. And, like, the region AVGN episodes and things like that. But I'll get to those when I get to those, I guess. I'll see you guys later. Um, I did get golf for the Famicom, but I don't think anyone wants to see me play that. Alright. Peace out. God bless. Have a good one.